Hello serverless people, Enrico here. In this video, I want to explain the Lambda Edge service. I will go over the Lambda Edge features and use cases. After that, I will also show how to deploy your first Lambda Edge from the AWS console. If you want to see other similar content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I publish a new video every Thursday. So Lambda Edge is a feature of Amazon CloudFront which lets you run the code using the CloudFront Edge locations. I will explain what are Edge location in a minute. By setting CloudFront as the trigger of the Lambda function, the Lambda function will run every time there is a request that goes through CloudFront. As you can see from the graph here is you upload the code in Lambda or you can use like the Lambda at Edge blueprints and then the Amazon CloudFront will replicate your Lambda code to all the CloudFront Edge locations. And every time there is a request to the CloudFront, Lambda function will run. Now let's see what are the edge locations. So as you can see from the map, edge locations are the blue dots. The three main concepts of the AWS infrastructure are AWS region, AWS availability zone, and edge locations. The region are the US East, US East 1, 2, your US West 1, 2, and same thing for Europe. And they are basically data centers with a uh, different availability zone. Availability zone is uh, a unique data center in the, into the region. The idea of edge location is to have data center as close as possible to users. So you will see the edge location in different parts of the world, even where AWS doesn't have the region. With that being said, let's see how the Lambda Edge actually runs in response to CloudFront events. So we have four main events. On the left side, we, we see the end user. When the end user send a viewer request to CloudFront cache, two things can happen. Either it get a hit on the cache, so it's gonna get a viewer response from the CloudFront cache, or it get a miss from the cache. So CloudFront has to actually ask and forward the request to the origin. The origin can be an S3 bucket, for example. You can set Lambda Edge trigger in one of those events. So viewer request, origin request, origin response, or viewer response. So depending on the use case, you have to decide which event is gonna trigger your Lambda at Edge function. Now that we have understood the um, Lambda Edge events and how it works, we need to be careful of some limitation because Lambda is true. Lambda Edge is, is a Lambda function by all means, but it has some limitations. The first one is that you cannot use uh, the latest tag, the dollar latest or aliases in order to create your Lambda Edge function, but you need to use a number of version of Lambda. Next one is a Lambda function must be in US East region. So I remember the first time trying the Lambda Edge, I was trying to do it in London, but it's not available. It's only available from the US East region. And then CloudFront is gonna replicate the the code through all the edge locations. Maximum memory can only be 128 and the timeout of uh, five seconds. And it is valid for viewer request and response because they have to be uh, quick enough to apply to CloudFront. For uh, original request and original response, the timeout goes up to 30 seconds and the memory size is the same as a normal Lambda function. And another big limitation, unfortunately, is the environment variables are not supported in on the Lambda Edge function. Now let's see from the AWS documentation the main use cases for the Lambda Edge. So the first one is website security and privacy. You can basically use the Lambda Edge to add uh, extra HTTP security headers to all the original response. And there is also a blog post from AWS that explains how to do it. Another good use case is uh, dynamic web application at Edge. Since here you have between your user and CloudFront, the Lambda Edge running, you can decide to basically modify or build uh, the web page based on headers or based on uh, any other data you can retrieve from DynamoDB. So you can basically re uh, respond with different pages or different, or you can even respond with uh, a cached page from Dynamo and, and serve it to your users. The last one that I want to see with you is the search optimized uh, optimization. And actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a video dedicated to this example. I'm gonna show you how to implement this uh, architecture. And the idea is that based on the header that are present on the 
uh, origin request, we're gonna send back the uh, different pages based if the user agent is from a real user or if it's like a crawler from, from the web. So uh, stay tuned in order to see this example. I'm gonna do the architecture and also deploy the application. Now enough with, uh, let's say, theoretical stuff. I will show you how to deploy your first Lambda Edge from the AWS console. All right, then I am on the Lambda console and I'm gonna click user blueprint. Make sure you are on North Virginia region, otherwise you're not gonna see this blueprint. And I'm gonna type CloudFront here. So I'm gonna show like, I'm gonna use actually the CloudFront modify response header blueprint for this example. So click here, configure. Uh, I'm gonna call it like my uh, CF Lambda Edge example. I'm gonna create a new role with AWS uh, templates my role cf cf lambda and as you see this it needs like basic lambda edge permissions because it needs also to be able to trigger cloud font from lambda and also to create new logs on cloudwatch this is the code of the lambda function as you can see just uh, substitute the name with the new name so had a name destination would be last modified it's gonna basically change from this to this one. I hit create function and on the once the function has been created, we should be able to see on the Lambda console that the Lambda function is actually triggered by CloudFront. So here there is like an extra menu because we need to, uh, AWS needs time to deploy the Lambda functions to all the edge locations. So it tells me like which CloudFront uh, distribution to use and then cache behavior will leave it to star. And here we need to decide to which CloudFront event we want to uh, we want to listen for. So as if we go back here, the CloudFront events are this one. So in this case, I'm gonna use uh, origin request, which is this one, which is when CloudFront cache is a mess and is gonna call is gonna request the element from the origin. Here you can see the four ones, so origin request. I acknowledge this has to be deployed, so it will take a few minutes, but I'm gonna click deploy in the meantime. We can see what we have on the console. So yeah, we need to see here, it's very important to see CloudFront here because it means that the Lambda function will be triggered by a, a CloudFront event. And if you go here, we see all the details we have just configured. Another important thing to remember is to, if you want to see the status of the code replication, we have to go on the CloudFront console and see when the status goes to deploy it. Another thing that I want you to notice is that if we go on the configuration and we check the role, we will see that we have the permissions for, of course, the CloudWatch log creation, but also the um, replicator Lambda um, policy statement, which means the Lambda function can basically be called from uh, CloudFront. And that was it for the first, let's say, uh, theoretical video on AWS Lambda at Edge functions and CloudFront. In the next video, I'm going to actually implement the uh, C optimization using Lambda Edge and CloudFront. So stay tuned and make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel to see the new videos. Thanks everyone for watching. Cheers.